What is going on guys? My name is John and welcome back to yet another video. There are currently over 800 different Pokemon that span across every game ever released. Some of these Pokemon you can find everywhere, and some you can only find once per game. We could easily pick out who the most common Pokemon is, but what about the rarest one? Today, we're going to find out who the rarest Pokemon is. When it comes to finding out who the rarest Pokemon is, we're going to have to take a look a lot deeper than just finding the Pokemon that you can only obtain once in a specific game. In addition, we're going to have to look farther than just an individual Pokemon. It's pretty easy to find any Pokemon you want in the GTS, Discords, or even online chat rooms. Some specific variations of Pokemon are so rare that you can't even obtain them legitimately anymore. The most common term for these are event Pokemon. Nintendo events have existed pretty much ever since the game was out, and the methods for obtaining Pokemon have changed, which definitely increases their value if more steps were needed to receive the Pokemon. I'd like to note that I only chose events that took place in America. There are thousands of events that took place in Japan that completely dwarf every other country's list of events, which would make this list extremely hard to narrow down. I try to put these in order of least to most rare, but I'd love to hear which ones you think are the hardest to get. Alright, let's check out the first one. For our first pick, we have Matang. Now, Matang isn't a relatively difficult Pokemon to obtain whatsoever, but there was a specific one released that does have some value to it. In 2005, Nintendo hosted the Pokemon Rocks America Tour. This event spanned over three years to basically give out all the three main Pokemon distribution events for Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. However, 2005 was the only year where in addition to giving out the Aurora ticket, they also gave out a special Matang with the OT of Rocks and had the move Refresh. The reason why this is so important is because no one in that evolution line can learn that move at all. A more important note is that Refresh is not an egg move on the Pokemon, so this move can't be passed down to any eggs, making it a one-of-a-kind Matang. This event was available in 5 different locations between the hours of 10am and 4pm during the tour. These next Pokemon are all within the same category. Every year, the Pokemon Video Game Championship takes place at multiple different locations around the United States. People who either attend or compete are eligible to receive a special competitive Pokemon. Some examples of this are the 2013 World Championship Smeargle. This Pokemon has a special event ribbon, has the OT of World 13. Well-known VGC player Ray Rizzo was given the own event with the release of his shiny Metagross that he used in the 2012 Pokemon Video Game Championships. Some other notable giveaways were Toler Webb's Ludicolo and Abram Burroughs' Cloyster. Just like Ray Rizzo, these Pokemon were given away at tournaments, but unlike Metagross and Smeargle, these were given away at the qualifiers in five different locations, rather than just the championships. Toler's Ludicolo was given away during the Spring Region Championships, while Abram's Cloyster was given away during the Winter Tourney. Although these Pokemon were quite rare, the giveaways were a lot more limited in the previous generation. In 2009 and 2010, the World Championships gave away two different Pokemon. In 2009, they gave away a Weavile, and in 2010, a Crobat. They both had the OTs of World 09 and World 10 respectively, and had Cherish Balls as their Caught Ball, a very common trend to use to differentiate an event Pokemon from a non-event Pokemon. The major difference between these events, however, are the fact that they were available for only a short amount of time during the championship day. The previous events I talked about had the event running as long as the venue was open, but these only lasted from 11am to 4pm. Stepping away from the competitive scene, let's take a look at some publicly available Nintendo events. Before GameStop became the source for handing out event cards with codes to download Pokemon, Toys R Us was the one who had all the brand deals for events until Nintendo cut ties with them around the release of Generation 5. During Generation 4's existence, many different events were released. Let's take a look. Our first two that we have are Darkrai and Mystery Mew. Darkrai's release was to promote the release of the 10th movie, The Rise of Darkrai. This event was also actually released at the Nintendo World Store in New York between June 1st to June 30th, 2008. The only difference here is that the Toys R Us Darkrai was only available from May 31st to June 1st from 12pm to 4pm. This event was available for a total of 8 hours. Seems like a short time frame, right? 
The Mystery Mew was used to promote Lucario and the Mystery of Mew releasing. This one was available at Toys R Us from 12 to 3 p.m. on September 30th, 2006. Three hours. Not exactly the most promoting promotion I've ever heard of, but to make it even worse, almost a year later they did it again. To promote Pokemon Ranger in the Temple of the Sea releasing on DVD, they gave away a Manaphy with a red scarf for only three hours on September 29th, 2007. Although I have the Darkrai, this is actually the only one on this list that I have solid evidence that I went, because I somehow still have the bookmark that they gave out promoting you to try out your new Manaphy and your copy of Battle Revolution. I also believe this holographic Dialga and Palkia thing was from there too, but these things are over a decade old so it's a little hard to remember. Our last local wireless event we have here is the Toys R Us Dragonite. This was available on November 8th to 9th, 2008 from 12pm to 4pm. This one is very similar to Matang because of the fact that according to every website around, this isn't a legitimate Pokemon. From what I'm aware of, this is the only legitimate way to obtain a level 50 Dragonite. Why is this a big deal you ask? Well, Dragonite evolves at level 55. Out of all the Toys R Us events released in Generation 4, I think this is the only one that I missed, and I'm really mad that I did. This Dragonite was meant to be a competitive Dragonite for the upcoming tournaments that year, but the ironic part is that since it's at a level before it evolves, it doesn't comply with the VGC rule set. This makes this Pokemon illegal and not usable in any tourney until they change the rules where Pokemon are automatically leveled down or up to level 50 in Generation 6. Now that we've covered these rare events, let's look at these crazy events. Many people might not have known, but Generation 1 and 2 did have Nintendo events. Although I wasn't old enough to take myself to these events as a kid, I know that these events were incredibly special. Nintendo representatives will pull up to locations in these specially made coach buses with computers that used to take the person's cartridge and inject the Pokemon into it. This would definitely explain why there are only 24 events released across North America and all of Europe. Out of all of the events, only one was not Mew, but we'll get to that one in a second. Let's look again at a more special Mew from Toys R Us. The process of giving this one away was a bit strange. The first 1,500 customers to arrive at each Toys R Us store in the United States on November 26, 1999 were given a sticker card that said, Gotta Catch Mew on it. Out of the 1,500 random people that received them, only 200 had the text caught me under the sticker. If you were one of the lucky people to receive that card, you were allowed to receive a Mew from December 8th to December 12th of that year. Although Toys R Us was the center for a large majority of Pokemon events for a long time, Nintendo Power ran quite a lot of contests in the first two generations. These ones are unlike any event you've ever seen. Once again, Nintendo Power offered a Mew giveaway. However, unlike events that were distributed through promo cards with unlimited Pokemon, Nintendo Power decided to take a different route. In all of North America, there were no more than 1,000 Mew given away, and it's guaranteed that there were quite a bit less than 1,000. In total, 1,000 prizes were given away, but people who didn't actually own a copy of any of the games were given a t-shirt instead. In order to win, you needed to send a note card mailer to Nintendo Power with an application for a chance to win a Mew. I can only imagine what some of these kids wrote on the cards they sent. What did Nintendo want them to say? <clears throat> Good evening, Nintendo Power Magazine. My name is John, and I'm severely intrigued by your contests that you're running through your company. I would be delighted to take ownership of one of 1,000 Mews that you have available at your current disposal. I have here attached my resume, I hope you enjoy it. Please send me a reply card as soon as you possibly can. Best regards, John. Something to note here is that you have to send a letter to Nintendo for them to send a letter back to you, only to have you send the letter back with your cartridge if you win. This process probably took well over a month, as they had to pick out the winner, send them a card, receive the game in the mail, inject the Mew, and send it back to the winner. As you would expect, this wasn't the only instance where this happened. The month before Mew, Nintendo Power offered a Pikachu as well. The contest was treated in the exact same style with only a thousand winners. The main interest with this one is that it was a surfing Pikachu. 
When in Pokemon Yellow, this unlocks a new surfing minigame that you can only do in that game. Although you could technically obtain it through Pokemon Stadium, this was just another way to obtain it. And for the most rare Pokemon released in the history of Pokemon games ever, goes to the Nintendo Power Celebi. This event was the last English Nintendo Power giveaway, and for probably a good reason. This Celebi was just like the other giveaways, except it only had 251 winners, obviously to commemorate Celebi's number or the total amount of Pokemon in the decks at that time. There really isn't much more to be known about this event that I didn't mention earlier, but it is without a doubt the rarest Pokemon of all time. And that's going to do it for today's video. If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe as we'll be making more videos very soon. If you have any suggestions for videos that you'd like to see, leave those in the comments below. Let me know out of all of these which you think is the rarest of them all. Or if I miss one, let me know. Other than that, I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.